So let's get started with the basics of working with our HTML5 environment. We're going to just create the basic skeleton and from there I will provide you with some files that you can use to sort of have us save some time and you don't have to put in your own content. But we're going to start off just with some basic creation of a simple HTML5 environment. Then we're going to add some CSS3 to it and eventually we're going to add a little bit of jQuery as well. So let's start by opening up your HTML editor, whichever one it is, and just create a brand new file. But before we do that actually, let's go back. In the files that I've provided for you, if you look at HTML5 version 2, you're going to see some files right here. We can start with our own file and we could put it right next to the existing index page and then as we go along you can delete the existing index page or if you just want to follow along with the video you can look at the index page and sort of examine how it goes from there. Nevertheless, what we're going to be doing is if you open up that index page and just take a look at it inside of a browser, you'll see that, you know, very similar to our previous example, although we do happen to have some background elements in place, you'll notice right away that our container happens to have rounded corners. We've got a little logo here, and as you can see, I've implemented some CSS3 to give us a little bit of an animation in there. The fonts that we're using here are not standard fonts that you would find on any system. So what I'm going to be showing you is the new CSS3 at font face environment, which is really wonderful. So all of these are substituted from that perspective. And right now this is just a um, visual element as a PNG, but eventually we're going to turn this into a jQuery slider of sorts and you'll notice that we do happen to have our navigation system similar as what we saw before but very subtly you might notice that there happens to be a drop shadow on these elements just as there is a drop shadow all the way along the side of our article that we happen to notice right here these used to be done with very elaborate sort of graphic elements inside of our XHTML environment However, we can do this with CSS3 now, which is really just wonderful. And of course, we happen to have our footer with the rounded corners as well. So the reason I'm going through this is because what I want to have you understand is when we're working in a HTML5 environment, we can approach things from a very simple perspective. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go into your HTML editor and just create a brand new file. And here I have a new file. Now Dreamweaver is kind of nice that it'll create this for me but as you can see I don't really like the way it's addressed the character set information here so what I'm gonna do is just return it to what we saw before the char set UTF-8 as we had here so I don't need the quotations although it would be fine for us to use that it's not really a problem but that should be perfect we still would you know do well to have a title and if we look at our environment killer sites training is our headline but we can have something similar to that as well killer sites training tutorials perhaps remember the title tag and title element is an extremely important one when it comes to search engine optimization so it, you would do well to have uh, very many number of keywords in here uh, but just don't go crazy um, so now I've closed the head tag and as you can see here one of the first things we want to do is to say doc type HTML and you can write it exactly like you see right here and if you need a little bit of extra time you can pause the video just to type these things in but you'll notice we happen to have an open head closing head section oh excuse me open head closing head section within the open HTML close HTML section in the head section we have the meta tag and very simply we define the character set to be UTF-8 the title is in here and the head closes so this section closes there you go within the HTML I also have my body so let's go into the body and we'll take a look at what we have in our browser and we'll see what we need so as you can see everything is wrapped inside of this rounded sort of container 
So, hmm, rounded container, why don't we then just use content? So, content is going to be an easy tag for you to remember. It's just a matter of putting it in here and defining all of the content that happens to be on your HTML page. We'll go inside of these elements. So, I'll just put in the content here. Whoops. There you go. And I will now separate those two with a number of spaces here so we have a little bit more of an understanding of what's going to go inside here. So let's take a look. Within the container, the content container that we happen to see here, the body is where we're going to put in the background that we happen to have. And you'll notice that we do have this header section. And this could kind of be a header section as well. You know, I could use the you know, very neutral div for this information here simply because I want to put an ID on it. But again, since we're using HTML5 elements, if this is a header, why not make this a header as well? That we could have two header tags. That's really not a problem. So I think I will do that. I'll just come in here and I will write in header. And I'll just put in the simple little bit of information here. We're just doing things very simply just to get it out of the way and sort of understand what we're doing with the code. So I'll just say logo whoops, goes here. Don't even need any tags because that's all going to be removed, not to worry. So I just finish off the header. And I can copy that information and right underneath it actually you know I usually like to give a little bit more space here to myself so I can see things a little bit better and let it breathe do I need a HTML comment here saying this is the closing t uh, header no not really now as I mentioned uh, I wanted to put the jQuery animation here eventually but I could have used a div tag here simply because there's really nothing going on here except the fact that I'm gonna have an ID to differentiate it from this one but again for the purposes of this exercise since we're really trying to explore the new semantic elements I'm gonna say this is like a secondary header so I will give it an ID however and we'll call this one anim short for animation so the jQuery animation will go here as well all right, well, let's see what's going on. So if this section here is my header, you know, we'll put in um, a little A link element in there. We'll have a H1 element for this. We'll have maybe a H3 or something smaller for this element, or maybe just a simple paragraph would be fine. And all of those things would go in this section. So I'll have one prepared for you that you can use a little bit later that makes that a little easier to look at. All right, so after that, we do happen to have this area here, which is our navigation. So just to keep things extremely simple, as we've been doing, I'm just going to ask you to come in here and put in a nav tag. Spell it properly, unlike myself. And then I'm just going to say links here. And we'll close it. So eventually we'll be coming in here and putting in the specific links as we need them. But right now I'm just keeping things extremely simple. Okay, so other than that we've got this main section here. Let's imagine that this was one big article and these are all you know headlines and subheadlines and paragraphs that belong to this article within that article we're going to have these two section areas where we can put in some simple information but right now all I really want to define is look this area on the side right here is going to be our article so we'll put in an article tag and we'll say you know text goes here close that article Underneath the article, we happen to have this section right here, which is reserved for our footer. So let's come in here and we'll say 
footer. So the rest of the information is going to be placed inside here. And we'll say, you know, put in different sections perhaps, or divs here. So all I really wanted to do with this right at the moment is to just show you that by looking at your, you know, either Photoshop document where you've sort of defined what the design is going to look like, or, you know, a JPEG or something along those lines, or even for that matter, just a little hand-drawn sketch that you have at your disposal, sort of envisioning what your website's going to look like. We can kind of look at the entire information and sort of look at it logically and think about what we're going to be doing grouping that information. And before we even think about applying CSS to it or doing anything else from that moment on, you'll see that it's pretty easy for us to sort of define how everything looks. And if you were to compare this to just the same example in an XHTML um, previous type of work, you'll notice that this is much more semantic. It makes more sense. It looks great. And it's very easy for us to be working with. So let's come back in the next video. And when we do, we're going to be building upon what we've just done right here. And we'll try to make this HTML5 document work in as many browsers, if not all browsers.